Hello friends, Martin here and welcome to this new tutorial on my channel. This time another one of the character creation tutorials and in it I will actually introduce you to this awesome tool called Marvelous Designer in which you can create your own CG clothing in a matter of minutes. So let's get to it! As mentioned we'll be using Marvelous Designer, this awesome tool that completely revolutionized making CG clothing. I've always been afraid of sculpting clothes because I know how much I suck at it. But with this software complex shapes and cloth simulation is now a question of just a few clicks and a few simple tucks on digital fabric. Well don't take my word for it, just watch this tutorial and you'll see for yourself. And look here at what version of Blender I'm using. That's right, it's the release candidate version that just came out with this beautiful splash screen from the awesome open movie Spring. It's so exciting to finally see the final version of Blender 2.8 might actually become a reality. Speaking of which, now is really the best time to start with Blender and there's really no better way than to try the new Blender Launchpad course by Zach Reinhardt who now under the banner of his new platform CG Boost just released this comprehensive introduction to Blender 2.8. And I mean, it's aimed at beginners, but I tried a course myself and I must say I am learning something new in every chapter. So I guess I'm not so advanced after all. But yeah, big shout out to Zach for finishing this epic course. I really can't recommend it enough. And if you want to get it, just click on the link in the description below. But now to the actual tutorial. First things first, if you haven't watched my how to quickly add animated characters using Adobe Fuse, definitely do that because it's sort of a prequel to today's tutorial. In it I show you how to create your own characters using the Adobe Fuse software, which is free for everyone in its current beta stage. And I don't really think it will get out of this beta stage anytime soon. So either head out to the tutorial or simply use your own animated character. Very quickly, here you can see me importing the character from Fuse and Mixamo. This one is in Collada format and you may actually want to check that your armature doesn't have any rotation or scaling. Uh, so that's why I hit Ctrl A here and apply both scale and rotation. Every time I want to create a garment in Marvel's designer, which is supposed to conform to some pose a character is making, the first step I do is adding a T-pose to the animation. The reason is we want to first create a clothing when the character is in its neutral pose and only then start animating it with the garment on. So that's why here I immediately go to the pose mode, select all my bones with A and switch to graph editor. Here I select all my keyframes and push them to the right, uh, forward in time. You can hit G and lock your axis on X to lock the movement of your keys only to the right. And let's push them so that the actual animation starts at round frame 30 or so. Then go back to frame 1 and here click on pose, clear transform and all. And in the 3D viewport hit I and choose available to add a keyframe for all your selected bones. This way we have keyed their position and rotation at the same time. Now when you scrub through your timeline you can see that the pose linearly transforms from the t-pose to our animation. Here I also delete other keyframes that I don't need in this case since I want this pose right here to be the end pose. Something you can do as well before exporting to Marvel's designer is to bake your keyframes. For that just go to Pose, Animation and Bake Action where you just choose your end frame, in my case it's 59. Click OK and voila, all your frames are baked so that there is a keyframe on each frame of your animation. Now all you have to do is to select the whole hierarchy of your armature here and export it as FBX. Just check selected objects here and that's it. Now switch to Marvelous Designer to create our clothing. What I really like about Marvel's designer is the fact that you actually need to know only a very little to start messing around with some basic clothing and cloth simulation. So on the left you have this 3D viewport where we are going to be adjusting our garment by various hand and pin tools. And by the way to move around in the viewport just hold down ALT 
and left click to rotate, middle mouse button to pan around and to zoom in and out, just hold down right mouse button. And here on the right in the 2D pattern window, we create pieces of our clothing and stitch them together. I will not go too deep on purpose here, so let's just follow along and at the end of it, you'll have enough knowledge about this software to make your own pieces of clothing. First off, of course, let's import our character. So here in import dialog, choose FBX and find the model we've exported from Blender. You'll be asked various stuff here in the import tab, but let's ignore everything now, except for this auto scale option, check that one. With that, click OK and your character, or rather an avatar, how it's called here in Marvel's Designer, will be imported. On this character, we'll be pinning pieces of clothing, but first off, let's jump up here into the animation mode and check whether we have our animation imported as well. Good, it's here, so let's get back to simulation mode. So as mentioned, we'll be creating this basic garment. This is actually a piece of clothing called Chiton and over it we'll make this cloak. In ancient Greece it was called Klamis. Let's start with the Chiton. For that, let's focus on this window on the right where we'll create our patterns. Marvel's designer actually works the same way as if you were cutting and sewing together a real piece of clothing. So you always have various shapes of fabric and by defining their shape and uh, connecting their sides and corners together, you form a garment. In our case, let's not make it too difficult. So let's just click on this rectangle tool here and drag it over the silhouette of our model like this. This way you've created your first piece of fabric and it immediately appears here, as you can see. We can start playing with the shape of this fabric. So let's hit this edit pattern tool and drag this bottom corner up like this. You can see that the shape changes in the 3D viewport as well. Now, I don't want this piece to be just a rectangle. I want the shape to taper a bit up here around the neck. So what we can do is hit this add point icon here and with it, add two new points here. Now you can grab the points and push them closer together like this. And also with the add point tool, add two points up here as well. I want to have here a little curved hole made for the neck. So grab another tool. This one is called edit curvature. You can activate it with the C key and drag this segment down like this. Cool. Now we have our basic shape more or less done. Of course, now we have created just the front part of our chiton. Uh, what we want to do is symmetrically copy this front part and mirror it over to the back. Fortunately, Marvelous Designer has a tool that does just that. So just right click on your piece of clothing and click symmetric pattern. A mirrored copy is now created. Now I remember that in the beginning I had a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that I create some pattern here in the 2D pattern window and it is also created in the 3D viewport, but when I start moving it here, it doesn't move in the viewport. Think of it like a UV editor, where if you move an island, it doesn't move the geometry either. So here on the right side, we create shapes and these stay just the same all the way. And now here on the left, we simulate those shapes and watch all the physics happen, which I will show you in a moment. So after you've symmetrized your pattern, go into the 3D viewport, click on this new piece of fabric and with your manipulator, push it behind the character like this. By the way, I have my manipulator set to a world settings, so they do not rotate along with your camera, which is unbelievably stupid if you ask me. So if you encounter this, know that you have to switch to world coordinates up here in the preferences and gizmo option. Awesome, with that done, time to fire up the magic. In this case, it's called simulate, uh, the magical simulate button of Marvelous Designer. Yes, if you hit this button or the keyboard shortcut spacebar, well, in this case, stuff just falls down. But that's just because we haven't connected any of our fabric parts together so that it hits the body and sticks to it. So first of all, hit spacebar again to stop the simulation and then hit Ctrl Z to return it to the default state. By the way, anytime I activate the simulation mode, this icon will glow yellow like this. 
Now let's go back to the 2D pattern window and hit the segment sewing button. This will allow us to connect our two parts together and just like it says, it will stitch them together along the edges. I want to have an open segment here for the hands to go through, but I want to connect the sides of the chiton so that they wrap around the body. So with the segment sewing tool, keyboard shortcut N by the way, just click here on this top part of the segment here and then on this part and connecting lines like these should appear. Do the same thing on the other side and now if you hit spacebar to simulate, well something's definitely happening. Stuff is connecting midair but it's still not sticking to the body because we haven't connected it up here. Again, N for sewing tool and connect these two edges on both sides. Be sure you are clicking on the same side of the edges, not across, because then your stitching might get crossed and create a mess. Let's see what happens now. Hit spacebar and I always want to make this sound when the parts connect together. This... <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, we can do better here. So disable the simulation mode with spacebar. Hit Ctrl Z. And let's add one little thing that will bring everything together and that is an internal polygon line. I know it doesn't sound too exciting, but bear with me. Just click on both sides of this pattern here around the waist area. And by the way, since we've created our pattern symmetrically, it automatically draws the line on the other side too. Now this line by itself doesn't do much, but if you check this elastic button here, well, that's a different story. This elastic option basically brings the cloth together as if there was some sort of rubber band. The idea is that later I will put a belt on this waist so that this folded bit will be hidden beneath it. Let's just quickly raise the strength and lower the ratio here, which makes the effect a bit stronger. Now, one thing that we can also do with the simulate mode active is with your regular select tool which you can activate by hitting Q, is to manually play around with the fabric. You basically can grab it, push it where you want it, the whole thing will simulate and you can experiment like this however you want. This is what makes Marvel's designer so much fun. This ability to quickly stretch and tuck your folds in any place. I also lowered the ratio of the elastic line a bit more to about 15 and I decided to select the line, hit Ctrl C, Ctrl V and paste a duplicate of it a little lower. This way I created a bigger shrunk area around the waist, which gives me more space for the future belt. Of course you can also create a belt in Marvel's Designer, but this tutorial is supposed to be basic, so let's just keep things simple. A bit of further pushing and pulling in the simulation mode here. And also one awesome thing about Marvel's is that even after you've simmed your garment, you can still change the shape of the pattern. So you're free to go back here, hit the edit pattern button, hotkey Z by the way, and change the shape however you want. What I also decided to do was to narrow down this neck part as well. Simply drag your points around, then hit spacebar and stuff will re-simulate. And anytime you think the clothing needs some manual help, don't hesitate to go in and fluff it like this. That's what this software is all about. One thing you can do too, to change the behavior of the fabric, is to go to this fabric menu up here, click on the fabric one and scroll down until you find this menu. Here you can pick from all sorts of fabric types. So let's change ours to linen, for example, since in ancient Greece they used it a lot. And you can see that when we hit simulate, the clothing readjusts itself. The behavior of linen is slightly different now. You can of course experiment with the settings here manually as well. So yeah, do that. Now to actually have our chiton animated along with our character, all you have to do is switch to this animation tab and hit this red camera button here. And all you have to do is just to wait for the software to compute the result. 
easy peasy and you can of course then just go to simulation tab hit spacebar and adjust your clothing further with the move tool one thing you can see though is that the fabric has a habit of returning to its original shape i really wanted to stick to this concrete spot on the shoulder since that's how men in ancient greece wore their sleeves so let's introduce another tool this one called pin for the pin to be usable, you basically shape the clothing to your desired shape, for example like this, then immediately stop the simulation with spacebar and click on the pin tool. Now just select a few polygons you want to stay pinned, and here we go, they won't budge an inch now. Just repeat the process, fold your fabric however you want it, Stop the simulation, pin polygons where you want them, and then simulate again. If you don't like the way you pinned your polygons, you can always use the pin tool again, hold down control and select the polygons you already pinned and they will get deselected. You can then play around with your fabric some more, uh, pin some new polygons and stick them to the place you've chosen. Now let's use this pin option to create a cloak or clamis for our character. This is very easy, but as surely you know, any character with cloak is immediately 100% cooler. So yeah, it's very very handy. It's pretty much like falling leaves or birds in the sky that make your shots always much more epic, uh, which is something I talk about extensively in my new course, making a short film teaser in Blender. So don't forget to check that one out if you want to make your own EV scenes and videos. Now simply create a new rectangular shape. Let's quickly move it behind the character. Make it narrow up here and then in the 3D viewport pin the two corners of it. And the thing is, now that the polygons are pinned, if you hit spacebar for the simulation mode, you can move them around however you want. So our goal now is to move them both on the neck of our avatar. So just move them around, pull on the fabric if needed and play with it until you get a shape you like. I'll actually speed up my clumsy process a bit here. It's so satisfying to watch, right? I love the way the fabric moves and simulates in 3D space. What you can do at this point, if you want to change the behavior of your cloak's fabric, is to create a second fabric type in this window here, select the clamis and change the type down here. Then in the fabric to settings, use for example this silk preset or other wool presets anything you like really. And you can see the behavior of the fabric changing with the different presets you choose. In the end I went with the wool coat weight preset. At one point I then edited the shape of the pattern a bit more, made it longer and also trimmed it up here. Then I just continued the process of pushing the two pinned polygons and pulling on the fabric until I was satisfied with the result. One additional note here, any edge of your garment pattern can be made elastic. Just select it with the edit pattern tool, shortcut Z, and activate the elastic option here. And then again increase the strength and lower the ratio until you are happy with it. Now some more pushing and pulling and let's get this fabric out of the hand of our character. That's very important and you can push it behind the character like this. One thing you can do to maybe simulate a bit of wind or a force pushing the fabric is to use this pressure option here. However, uh, well, don't go overboard with it or you'll end up like this. 
If you manage to completely mess up your garment, you can always go here and hit reset 3D arrangement, but it's not really necessary here. Just pull on the fabric and get it back to the previous shape. And with the pressure set to negative one, it's actually as if very low force pushed it away from the body. So it behaves a bit more floaty now. Cool. The very last thing we'll do here is to hit this remesh button. Uh, it actually does quite a decent job of creating a nice looking rectangular topology instead of a total mess of triangles. Now just shift select all the parts of your garment, hit file, export and OBJ select it. And you can safely ignore everything now. The only concern might be the scale of the thing and we will adjust that in Blender quite easily. So back to Blender now, here simply import your OBJ. If it's a different size, scale it to its place, uh, 0.1 worked for me. Now to improve the look, you can smooth the normals. Hit Ctrl 2 for smoothing the geometry and also with proportional editing activated by hitting O, push and pull various areas where the geometry might protrude. Also, before adding textures, you can lay out the UVs, which are, uh, however, pretty much laid out for you from Marvel's designer. So just select the regions and pack them. Here I actually went in, textured the garment in Substance Painter very quickly, added some belt and little accessories. But that's a topic for another time. So my friends, I hope I've piqued your interest and introduced you to the wonderful tool called Marvel's Designer in a quick and easy way. And as you can probably tell by the huge amount of icons and menus we haven't covered, this tool is much, much more complex than what I've shown you here. So yeah, can't recommend it enough. But that's quite enough for today. See you next time and Martin out.